In this video, we're going to go over complex ion formations. Complex ions are formed through Lewis acid and Lewis base interactions. Typically, the Lewis acid is a metal cation, and the Lewis base is a ligand, a molecule with a lone pair of electrons that can be donated to the metal cation. Now, the reason why complex ions are, are important is because they can increase the solubility of a compound. And we're going to look at an example of how this works, but in summary, it really just works by removing a common ion. Okay. Now, the next thing is, when you form a complex ion, there is a reaction for that formation. The equilibrium constant for this reaction of forming a complex ion is what we call the formation constant. It's not anything different from a regular equilibrium constant. It's still products over reactants with stoichiometric coefficients as exponents, and solids and liquids are excluded. So the same as any equilibrium constant expression, but we just give it a special name, the formation constant Kf. So here I have an example showing the reactions involved in the formation of a complex ion. So the complex ion is copper with four ammonia molecules. And here you have the four individual steps involved in the formation of this complex ion. In each step, the copper is going to bind another molecule of ammonia. So this is the first step with equilibrium constant K1. This is the second step where it binds a second ammonia molecule with equilibrium constant K2. This is the third step binding a third ammonia molecule, equilibrium constant K3. And the last step, binding the fourth ammonia molecule to form the complex ion and with equilibrium constant K4. Now, often in terms of equilibrium, we're not interested in the equilibrium constants of these individual steps, but we're interested in the formation constant, which is really the overall reaction of copper plus four ammonia molecules forming the complex ion. So if you actually take a look at this final reaction compared to these four individual steps, you actually notice that this overall reaction is just the sum of all these individual steps. When you add up these reactions, a lot of the intermediate ions will cancel out on both sides, right? All of these ions will cancel out. The only thing that's going to be left is copper plus four ammonia molecules on the left and the complex ion on the right. So the, the question here is, if I add these four reactions, how can I evaluate the equilibrium constant for the overall reaction? And the way you can do that is by multiplying the equilibrium constants together. So that means here, the formation constant Kf would be equal to the product of K1 times K2 times K3 times K4. And I also want to mention that this isn't just for complex ion formation. This is for all reactions. So anytime you are adding reactions together, you can simply multiply their equilibrium constants to get the equilibrium constant for the overall reaction. Okay. So now let's take a look at an example. In our example, where we have a situation where we want to know how will the addition of ammonia affect the amount of dissolved copper hydroxide in a solution. Okay. Now, first we can see that we're given the dissociation reaction for copper hydroxide into copper cations and hydroxide anions, and we're given the solubility product constant. The value of the KSP is really small, 10 to the negative 20. Since this is a very small value, that means at equilibrium, very little of the copper hydroxide is dissolved in solution. So first of all, let's take note of that. Ksp for copper hydroxide is very small. So initially, very little copper hydroxide is dissolved. So that means initially, most of the copper hydroxide is a precipitate in solid form. So now, what happens when we add ammonia? Well, ammonia, as we saw over here, and also as provided in this question, can combine with copper cations to form a complex ion. The formation of this complex ion has an extremely large formation constant, 10 to the 12, which is very, very favorable. 
So since this is very favorable, if you, when you add ammonia, it's going to use any of the copper cations and solutions to form the complex uh, ion. And when it forms the complex ion, it's going to decrease the concentration of copper cations in solution. So we'll say here, addition of ammonia will result in the formation of the complex ion decreasing the concentration of copper cation in solution. Now, what's important about decreasing the concentration of copper cation in solution? Well, if you look at this reaction, we can apply Les Chatelier's principle. If you decrease the concentration of one of the products, the copper cation, this reaction is going to shift to the right, which is going to make more of the copper hydroxide dissolve in solution. So here, this causes the first reaction to shift to the right resulting in more dissolution or more dissolved copper hydroxide. Okay, so in short, when this complex ion was formed, more of the original solute dissolved. And as I mentioned, this is essentially just the removal of a complex, of a common ion. When you formed the complex ion, you removed copper. So that caused more of the solute to dissolve. So that's complex ion formation.